Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Wassalamu alaikum wassalamu ala Rasulillah. Ibn Abbas said, If anyone recites the Quran and follows what is in it, Allah has guided him from misguidance and will protect him on the day of judgment from an evil reckoning. May Allah grant us all an easy reckoning on that day. That is because Allah says that all those who follow my guidance will not go astray and will not be miserable. This is in Surah Taha. And subhanallah, it's a powerful, powerful <coughs> set of ayat where part of it says, you know, فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدَى فَمَنْ تَبِعَ هُدَىٰيَ فَلَا يُضِلُّ وَلَا يَشْقَى فَلَا يُضِلُّ They will not go astray, وَلَا يَشْقَى And they will not be miserable. And then the ne very next ayah, which I'm sure we've all heard, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ But whoever does turn away from this guidance, from this reminder, فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ What is ضَنْك? What is, what is ضَنْكَ? Risk. It's a risk. It means, No. So it means something that is tightened, very, very narrow. And it's referring, number one, to the qabr. That these people who turned away from the guidance of Allah, and the moment you put them in the qabr, and the moment you walk away, the qabr is going to squeeze them up until there's nothing left. SubhanAllah. But in extension, we can also understand that it's in this life also. The person will be miserable in terms of happiness, in terms of no peace of mind. How much people do we have today? They will be the wealthiest people, but do they have any peace in their lives? Probably not, unless they have the Quran. And that's the, the no exceptions. Unless you have the Quran, you cannot attain peace. How many Muslims do you have today? They come, they offer salah day and night, but they understand nothing of the Qur'an. And so you find that there's no peace in their lives. These are the very same people who are always running to the ulama. I've got this problem and that problem and this problem and that problem. What should I do? What should I do? And what's the simple answer? Ihfadillah yahfadkum. If you guard your relationship with Allah, Allah will guard you. Simple. This is the believer. The believer is different from all of the rest of the people. From the Muslimin, let's take the Muslimin, we make it relevant to us. The believer is a specific person from amongst them. That when good touches them, they say Alhamdulillah. And when bad touches them, they say Alhamdulillah three times. Minimum three times. One, because that test was not in their deen. The worst of tests is in your deen. You find that you can't offer salah anymore. Allah has not allowed you to offer salah. That's a calamity. Where do you think you're going? You're failing to offer salah, where do you think you're going? When the first question you'll be asked is of your salah. Second, what's the second? The, re the second reason why he said Alhamdulillah is because it wasn't worse. I think Ibn Abbas said this. Oh, he's, you know, it's like the, the second reason is that it wasn't worse. So if you lost one eye, you could have lost both. If you lost one arm, you could have lost both. You lost your job, people losing their lives. You, what, you lost your family? Go to Palestine and see how much they've lost. There's always going to be people who are worse off than you. So that's the second reason you say Alhamdulillah. The third reason is that this musibah that touched you is not in the Akhirah. Because the biggest of musibahs that could ever touch you is the Akhirah. What's going to happen in the Akhirah? There's only one thing that could happen in the Akhirah. What is that? Jahannam. Jahannam. Anything is better than Jahannam. Which is why Rasulullah Sallallahu taught us. That, you know, those who will go or rather, they'll be the first to be called on the Day of Judgment. They used to praise Allah in times of ease and in times of difficulty. They would say, Alhamdulillah. When a difficulty strikes, they would say, Alhamdulillah. No, this is better than... It's not coming to my mind right now. Alhamdulillah. وَأَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ حَالِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ That's it. وَأَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ حَالِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ I seek refuge in Allah from the condition of the people of the fire. In that in itself is a lesson for us. That no matter what goes on in your life, in your life if you are heading towards Jannah, good news. Take it as congratulations. فَبَشِّرْ عِبَادِ Take glad tidings. Because anything is better than Jannah. If you only have crumbs to eat today, it's still better than Jahannam. What does Allah say regarding Jahannam? فَلْيَذُوقُوهُ حَمِيمٌ وَغَسَّاقٌ You want to know what you're going to eat in Jahannam? Hamim, boiling water. Try it. وَغَسَّاقٌ Pus. Pus that comes out from your wounds. فَلْيَذُوقُوهُ Let them taste it over and over. 
They eat from the tree of zakum. What is zakum? It's a fruit. That when you eat it, it tears and boils apart your insides. Allahu Akbar. That's just a little. Now, وَآخَرُ مِن شَكْلِهِ أَزْوَاجِ We're actually reciting these, these ayat in Surah uh, Salat Al-Fajr today, from Surah Sad. Allah says, وَآخَرُ مِن شَكْلِهِ أَزْوَاجِ We have many more similar types of punishments awaiting these people. Simply because they couldn't understand one simple thing. No matter what you go through in this dunya, it's nothing compared to Jahannam. Allahumma ajirna min al-nar. May Allah protect us all from Jahannam. That's the gist of the message. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَا عِشْتَ Donka, but if you can hold on to the Qur'an, and all those who follow my guidance will never go astray, and they will not be miserable in this life and also in the next. So again, going out of your way to seek knowledge of the Qur'an. <coughs> Make it your business. The, the people before, how long would they travel just to go seek? Some, some interpretation of the Qur'an. The interpretation, the tafsir of one ayah. We've had people traveling all the way from Iraq and Makkah and Medina to Syria when they would hear that there's only one person who can translate this ayah and right now he's in Syria. Again, it's in the same PDF, we'll get to it soon. They would travel all the way just to understand the tafsir of one ayah. That is what they used to do to understand the Qur'an. Imagine that at those days, no trains, no cars. You're walking. If you're lucky, you got a camel. You're walking it. How many of the ulama, they, they would walk for two, three months at one time just to find one hadith and one ayah. Going out of your way to seek knowledge. Because by the way, knowledge will never just come to you. Allah said, In tansurullah yansurkum. If you support the deen of Allah, then he will support you. Meaning that if you're expecting just, you know, for knowledge to come so that you can know what to do to understand the Qur'an. But you're busy working and you're saying, oh, I've got no time, this and this and that. No, Allah is saying, in terms of Allah. If you make that time first, Allah will put barakah in that time. He'll sort and he'll fix all of your affairs so that you won't have to miss out on it. How many people today you see they are not here because of certain affairs? How many, how many of our regulars they are not here today because of certain affairs? The, the difference between us today and the people then is they made it their business. If they had a class or a halaqa to go to and other things came up, they're like, no, you all can wait. I'll go for this first because this is my deal. Actually, one of the only reasons that a man can travel for more than four months away from his wife is for the purpose of seeking knowledge. If he's seeking knowledge, then the wife doesn't like, cannot say you have to come home every few months or anything like that. That's how important seeking knowledge is. And you were going to say something? Yeah, uh, two things. One is what you mentioned about Jahannam earlier. Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Oh Umar, if you see Jahannam that day, then had you had done the deeds of 70 prophets, you will still pray Allah for you to Jahannam. SubhanAllah. So that's the first thing. And then you mentioned um, just now about seeking knowledge. Some of the ulama before. I think um, there was one Sahaba, he, he travelled from Medina all the way to uh, Egypt to hear one hadith of the Messenger because that, that was the only person who remained that heard the same hadith. He went to him, he listened to the hadith, he said Salah. As soon as he finished hearing the hadith, he got up on his mouth and he left. Because he wanted to hear someone say exactly the way the Messenger You know what? If you could hear, Subhanallah. About the way, speaking of, whilst we're going over the virtue of the Quran, adab when it comes to the Quran. So again, the general virtue is it is better to be dressed, wear the jabba, wear the kufiya if you can. Again, if you're coming from work or anything like that, you're excused, obviously, you know, as long as you're making time to come in the first place. But let's say if you're just at home, if you had time before, it is better to wear the best of your clothing to seek knowledge. And the best of your clothing, number one, Rasulullah said, Rasul. Rasul. the best of your clothing is white. And number two, the most beloved clothing to him was the thobe. So I'm not saying wear the thobe just for the purpose that it's a uniform or Muslim uniform today, but simply because it was the most beloved of clothing to your beloved to the one who you are supposed to know. Because Allah said, and, and, and His Messenger said, and it's in Surah Ahzab, Allah said that the Messenger is closer to the believers than their own selves, their own spouses, their own children. 
and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, none of you have believed until Allah and His Messenger are more beloved to you than your own selves. So we can continue dreaming, no problem. Yeah, I've got Iman, I've got Iman, no problem. But are they more beloved to you than your own souls? Then you truly do have Iman. May Allah grant us all that level of Iman. May Allah make up Himself and His beloved the most beloved to us. <coughs> Subhanallah. And that's why you know the dua we are taught for this. Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbak. Oh Allah, I ask you for your love. Wa hubba man yuhibbuk. And the love of those who love you. Wa al-amal al-ladhi yubalighun yuhubbak. And the deeds that will make me accomplish. Or meet. Yubalighun yuhubbak. Your love. What deeds? Number one, correcting intention. And also correcting practice. Meaning free from bid'ah. Doing it the correct way. Loving Rasulullah s.a.w. This is the power is a comprehensive dua. Okay, so let us continue.